Our trip takes anglers to some of the most iconic rivers in the world, surrounded by vast landscapes that challenge the very definition of beauty. In Montana, the rivers don't just flow, they tell tales of time, of nature's cycles, and of the majestic wildlife that grace their banks. It is a place where bald eagles soar overhead, where bison roam freely, and the trout? Well, they're there in numbers and sizes that will make any angler's heart race. We've just arrived, and we're just settling in and we're talking about the next few days and how great it's going to be. So we're really excited about it. Right on the river, um, and we're just waiting to see what the evening rise does before getting ourselves uh, set up for the next few days. It's going to be great. Yeah, the town of Craig, population of 41 or 42, if you come through there in November, it's a ghost town, and then May 1st hits, and all of my peers and wonderful friends around the state start to filter in and start to chase these big rainbows and brown trout. The Missouri is a uh, tailwater, so it just holds right now about 6,000 trout per mile starting at the dam. It's the best dry fly fishing potentially in the lower 48, uh, flat water, Sight fishing, you post up and fish to rising trout that you're seeing feed visually. It's just a fish factory and it has been the most resilient fishery in the state. This year and last year is the second highest population of trout we've seen since they've been recording. So it's amazing. Been waiting a long time for it. Yeah. Waiting a long time, so it'll be good. The anticipation's been massive, and then we're ready to wet a line and wrestle a few of these uh, trout. The Missouri River, especially in high summer, is like a fly fisher's dream come true. When we rolled in, we were right in the thick of the prime dry fly fishing season. We experience these amazing hatches, caddis, PMDs, and then towards the end of our stay, the tiny trichos joined the party. What was cool about the Missouri was that it offered a kind of choose your own adventure for anglers. For folks who love the thrill of catching large numbers of fish, using nymphs is the way to go. With a good guide pointing them in the right direction, it was pretty standard to see boats pulling in 20, 30, sometimes even more fish in a day. But for those who prefer to headhunt rising fish, the dry fly action on the Missouri is pretty hard to beat. These are trophy sized resident fish that are pretty picky, so it was all about getting your fly selection right to match whatever was hatching at the moment. And even when that was sorted, it was about making that perfect cast and presentation. It was more challenging for sure. You might not catch as many, but when you did hook one, the feeling of accomplishment for our guests was unbeatable. The bugs are non stop. There's a lot of places in the world where dry fly fishermen go and sit and wait on the bank for these hatches to, you know, it might be two days before some of these hatches happen. Out here they happen every day. When those PMD hatches came through, um, you couldn't count the amount of rising fish. And one of the hardest things was actually focusing on your fly and the fish you're fishing to. There were just so much going on, so many bugs, fish rising everywhere that 
it was quite easy to get distracted, look over to the left, and then you fly would be easy. Drifted down, took it, lifted, got him. How was it? No, no, honestly, it was brilliant. It was just a brilliant day. Whew, where do we go from here? Evenings by the Riverside Lodge on the Missouri were honestly one of the highlights of the trip. And it wasn't just because of the spectacular views or the fishing stories. There is this unique camaraderie that forms when you have a group of people all equally passionate about fly fishing. There was a mix of sharing photos, swapping stories. As the sun set, it was moments like these that cemented the trip as a once in a lifetime experience. <laughs> uh, she's yeah. coming together and celebrating it. For a day on the river. Well. We shifted our location from the serene environment of the Missouri to the contrasting terrains of Dillon. As we made the journey from Craig, the landscape morphed dramatically, revealing a whole new side of Montana. The drive was nothing short of breathtaking, with vast expanses giving way to the stark beauty of Dillon's arid terrains. Its reputation as a central hub for accessing some of the state's most iconic trout streams was well deserved and it was this strategic position combined with the unique experience each river offered that made Dillon an unmissable stop for any serious fly fisher. Starting with the Beaverhead River, this waterway epitomizes what many anglers dream of when they think of Montana fly fishing. Its status as a tailwater ensured that even in the peak of summer, the river remained cool, offering consistent flows that trout just thrive in. And it isn't just any trout, the Beaverhead boasted some of the largest specimens in the continental US. Its hatches are legendary, with PMDs, caddis, golden stones and hoppers making their presence felt as the warmer weather rolls in. For many, the beaverhead alone is reason enough to visit Dillon. Yet Dillon doesn't just rest on the laurels of one river. The big hole with its pristine freestone waters presents an experience that is just as much about the journey as it is about the fishing. This is a big hole river. We got 135 miles of floatable water. We're on the lower end. It's one of the last natural flowing freestone Blue Ribbon Trout Rivers in the U.S. It holds grayling, brook trout, rainbows, browns, whitefish. What am I missing? It's got everything. It's our job to find them. We don't want that fish. In the township of Dillon, Anderson and Platt provide us with an enchanting old school experience. Their shop with its welcoming hunting dogs and friendly faces exudes a warmth that is hard to put into words. The expertise they brought, especially when it came to rivers like the Beaverhead, Jefferson and Big Hole, was second to none. Their unparalleled knowledge of local fly patterns for these diverse fisheries was invaluable. Stokes! Hell's 
trying to sort it all out. Figure it out, man. Figure it out. Where are you off to? Uh, the secrets. <laughs> Real secret. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll go fish. Red sticks, extra carbs. It's been a tough day on the water. The accommodations were, in many ways, the unsung heroes of our journey. The very essence of these lodgings was to encourage participants to let their guards down to let go of the world they'd left behind and to wholeheartedly immerse themselves in the authentic Montana experience. It was these moments, these serene introspective pauses that added layers of depth to our journey. They transformed our trip from a mere fishing expedition to a soulful journey into the very best of Montana. The final chapter of our journey in proximity to the iconic Yellowstone National Park truly encapsulates what made this adventure one for the books. The park is an exhibition of nature's marvels. Geothermal wonders like erupting geysers and boiling springs provided a window into the Earth's subterranean processes leaving visitors in awe. Yet it wasn't just about the dramatic landscapes, the fishing experience there is unparalleled. The park's pristine waters, home to wild cutthroat trout, beckoned anglers to tread off the common paths and discover fishing spots, while not far off the road, can only be considered wilderness. But Yellowstone's allure didn't just stop at its waters. The land itself is alive and teeming with majestic creatures. Bison roaming freely along the roads served as a gentle reminder of the vastness and wildness of this land. In essence, while fishing was a cornerstone of our Yellowstone experience, the park offered so much more. The raw, unfiltered beauty of the park served as the perfect exclamation point to conclude our epic journey, leaving us with memories and tales that will last a lifetime.
Montana Adventure is a testament to the age-old saying that it's about the journey, not just the destination. It is a journey of amazing fishing, awe-inspiring landscapes, comfortable lodging and friendships forged along the way. It was a welcome respite, a chance to swap the cold for adventure and to immerse oneself in an environment that, while vastly different, feels strangely like home.